How many of you out there love a story about a young man who starts in a garage and then continues to grow? Yeah, I know I do. And this is one of those with my buddy Dan. Starting in a garage about 15 years ago, then going into 5,000 feet, then 15,000 feet, then 20,000 feet, and currently in a 40,000 square foot building. Dan, this is Zero Hour Parts, and I'm excited to introduce you to Zero Hour and this Matt Server machine they have recently invested in and why they invested in it. Don't let me steal your thunder. I would like to hear from you and why you decided on Matt Sura. Yeah, that's right. Before COVID, uh, we were convinced that uh, lights out machining was the way to go. Um, our biggest cost is labor by far, skilled labor content, CNC programming. And uh, to be able to open up their time in the day to focus on programming a part and then having the spindle run at night or on the weekends um, unattended was critical to our thinking. Uh, COVID hit us right when we had this machine ready to go in March of 2020. And uh, it was painful, but we stuck with it, um, committed to the technology, and we use it as for low volume. Uh, fives is a normal run for us, but the programmer can set up a, the first part, tweak it in, give it all the TLC it needs, and then run the rest at night unattended. It's, it's great for that. Dan, you actually had the kind of the Matt Sora concept when you first started machining, right? You were like, well, this is what I need, and this is how I need to produce parts. You caught up with the guys over at Yamas and Matt Sora and realized, wait, everything that I've been thinking about is right here, right now, and I can have it. Is that kind of the excitement you process you went through as well? Yeah, uh, about 10 years ago, I saw a problem with the labor force, and that skilled labor would always be a bottleneck for our growth. And my solution at the time was to buy a Haas with a pallet changer and weld on another pallet changer to the other side of it. So we had four pallet changing and get it into running overnight and be able to set up programs to run overnight. I actually added some extra offline tool capacity that the machine could grab automatically. And it was a one-man show. I was trying to design a lights out machining center for our business. And I spent about two years, my background was mechanical engineering and I did my best um, ran across a lot of problems that I thought I had solved, um, things that I, I knew would come down the pipe as something that needed to be solved. And when I saw that Matsura had actually done all the work, uh, a reputable company with a style machine, all the experience, an army and engineers that blow me out the water, um, they solved all the problems that I foresaw. And it's just a great machine. And so we abandoned that project, and uh, it's cheaper anyway to buy it from our business end knows what they're doing besides a home group. Yeah, well said. And as a prototype shop, Dan, knowing that you have an average size of five normally, how important to you is it to keep that spindle running? Well, spindles making chips, you know, everybody says that's, that's what people pay for. Um, and that's another thing that's so great about this machine is it decouples the spindle from being the bottleneck. Parts can get loaded offline with the spindle while well, the spindle's turning. We can load up uh, jobs here. 32 different jobs in the back. It holds 300 plus tools. Um, what well, used to be a big uh, time sink for us is building tools, tearing them down. You know, a normal machine can run through four jobs a day, different parts, breaking down tools, building them back up, measuring them, everything else. This machine, he spends less than 10 minutes a day switching out tools. It's really a no-brainer. Um, he knows what he has in the machine. It just runs. It's just such a, a time saver for us, and that's really the key is saving the burden on his mind, the programmer's mind, and freeing that up to do what he does best, or most effective, what's most valuable is put tool paths to a part. Yeah, you're so right. And that is an actual quote from your programmer machinist. It's less than 10 minutes a day switching out tools. So speaking of tools, how significant do you think it is that you've invested in all the tooling to fill up that tool crib and being able to either have redundant tooling or material specific tooling without having to spend so much time loading and unloading and measuring and offsets and everything that goes into changing out tools? Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge saver, like I said. He knows, I mean, it's probably a 25, off the top of my head, 25% just labor savings that he can put towards other things, so tool pads. Um, he's not doing that anymore. It just doesn't exist with this machine. It measures its own tools and it's accurate within less than a thousandth. He doesn't 
have to worry about blends. It just, it's, uh, it's beautiful. What does precision mean to you, and what does that confidence in this machine mean to zero hour parts? What it means to us is that if he gets that first part dialed in, well, first of all, if it's within a couple uh, thousands, you don't even worry about it. It's a no brainer. If it's, everything's plus or minus two thousands, piece of cake, no problem. If he starts getting tired of that, he might have to sneak up, or we would say sneak up on it. Um, but once it's dialed in, if the order is for more than one, we know it's going to be right. If you can just launch it at night unattended, it's going to be right. The machine does not screw up. It's rigid. Uh, you know, I think it comes together, the rigidity and the accuracy. It's just there. Right? The machine just, he knows what to expect. There's no uh, unexpected, he doesn't walk in the door with unexpected results. He knows what he's going to get. And I think that comes with the rigidity and the accuracy of it all. And Dan, service and support always comes up, and I've said this so many times on camera, the sales guys sell the first one, service and support sells all the rest. It seems like it's a, a redundant statement again, but so important to talk about. And I know you've been working directly with Yamazin. What's service support and the sales team been like and the relationship with Yamazin? It's been excellent. We haven't needed, needed service or support <laughs> since it's been installed. Um, I cannot think of an issue we've had. It runs, it does as advertised, and it's everything we wanted it to be. Um, Currently in a 40,000 square foot building, what would you say to the audience? Say, give us a look, here's the website, this is what we can do for you. Right, Zero Hour Parts, we'll bend over backwards to help the, our customers out, that's what we're here for. My background is engineering, and I always, we try to create a shop that I always wanted to exist as an engineer. Some of their bend over backwards help my project be successful and we'll do what it takes um, to make our customers successful. And uh, the future, invest in the future, invest in uh, employees, and, and just be here for our customers when they need it. Well, Dan, thank you so much for sharing all of this. To everyone out there watching right now, Zero Hour Parts, in my opinion, a fantastic name that goes great with this machine because if the machine's always running, constantly loading, it's almost like these parts take zero hours to machine. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So Dan, thank you so much. I do appreciate your time and your uh, offering to jump on camera with MTD today. Yeah, my pleasure, thank you.